Okay, so in the last video, we looked at how to do a simple uh, drainage animation, basically using these curves that are um, identifying as uh, drainage lines and some points to kind of indicate the water movement. Uh, I chose uh, this option that's going to leave basically a trail um, of these points. And so that's just basically taking those curves uh, dividing them by a specific distance. Again, I'm just trying to create a simple 10 second animation. So if we were to use that whole 30 frames per second, that means I need at least 300 frames for a 10 second video. So I basically just selected like the longest one, type distance, oops, or type length. Saw that was 1,500 feet roughly, so if I were to divide that by 300, it's about 5 feet per point. So that's what kind of gives us that um, necessary distance. Um, so you don't really have to move or adjust that like I just did. I'm going to bring that back to 5. Um, and then we just kind of split it to start off looking at the very first points. So that's why the index is actually set to 1. And it goes all the way to the very last one. Um, so that kind of indicates the speed or that they're all moving at the same speed. It's just some take longer to drain to that uh, bottom point than others. So that's what we're going to animate. What I also want to show in this video is how to actually simultaneously animate the camera to kind of orbit around it. It's, it's already kind of interesting just seeing the points animate, but I think we can add an extra level of dynamic uh, quality to the video by actually having the camera kind of orbit around it as well. So in order to do that, you are going to need another plugin called Horster. It's a combination of horse and rooster. You can see the icon is half a rooster, half a horse. So uh, this allows us to basically control the camera um, and Rhino with Grasshopper. So we'll use both the um, get camera information as well as the set camera information. And so once you kind of figure out where you want that composition to be, we can actually activate this. Again, I kind of strongly suggest that you uh, go to render and do show safe frame. That way we know where our composition is going to be within this frame. Uh, especially as we start to orbit, we can make sure that we aren't really kind of going outside of that. Um, so I'll zoom in to a decent amount, kind of make sure that this is more or less in the middle of that composition. Kind of pick out a good angle. So once you're pretty much happy with that, we can... Oops we can go ahead and activate this camera. So it just needs a Boolean toggle to do so. So as soon as I turn on true, it's gonna give me the location of where the camera is, the target, so that's this uh, X you see right there. It even gives you the lens length information as well as the um, up direction. You don't have to worry too much about that. It's really about this other information that we'll use. Um, so what I like to do now, um, because I'll probably, I don't need, I only need this uh, component to get this initial information. So I'll actually go ahead and pull out a point for that location. I'm gonna bake it onto its own layer. So we have a layer dedicated to camera location. I'm also gonna do the same thing for my target. So I'm also gonna bake that on the same layer. Hit OK. Like I said, we really don't need anything else from that. You'll see now in Rhino that we have basically that target where the camera is pointing as well as um, that uh, camera location. So we're basically going to use this slider that's animating our water. This is again, kind of our big, this is the only thing we need to do to animate this. We'll use this to simultaneously choose 
a different location for it to orbit around. So the best way to do that is kind of think about creating some type of arc or curve for the camera to follow. So what I like to do is because it's a little bit hard to draw a curve um, when it's not on the seaplane, I'll go ahead and project this down to the seaplane. I'll keep it there, so make sure you don't delete it. So we can always kind of bring it back up to that. And like I said, we'll just draw a simple curve. So I'm going to just use this control point curve. I'll kind of pick one out there, pick a point there, and maybe something like this. So we can kind of imagine this camera following this arc. So you can obviously make it uh, however you want, but I just want to use this to kind of set up that idea. So now we can take this, move it vertical, back up to the starting point. So this is kind of your uh, arc where your camera is going to pan around. So we have to follow the same uh, logic. I'll keep one of those at least. We'll um, use the same logic of understanding that we'll use this slider of 300 points um, to divide our curve at a minimum of that 308 points as well. I'll show you the issues if um, you adjust that to be slightly different. Some could be to your advantage, some could become an issue, so uh, you'll see kind of the versatility of doing that. So I'm going to take this curve, I'm going to go ahead and reference it. Now I'm going to take that curve and just divide it by a series of points. Like I said, the, the longest one, if I hover over this, has 308 points. So if I just wanted to basically orbit um, or have the camera move the, the entire length of the video, I just have to make sure that I use the same number of points. So I'll go ahead and do 307 because it's going to divide into that many segments or basically create us one extra point. So as you can see, there's 308 points. So basically start to think about each one of these points representing a new uh, camera location. I'll go ahead and keep this point, my target point. I don't really have to worry about doing much with that. So that's gonna stay as my target. That'll be just one point. But then, like I said, I'm gonna use all these points as my location. So I can't just plug in all of them. I have to actually kind of use the same process of um, cycling through them. So the best way to do that is to use the list item component. So there's my list of points. And then I'm going to, again, use this same animation slider to pick that starting point. And then I'm going to use this as my camera location. I can adjust the lens as I feel necessary. And then I'll uh, go ahead and activate it. So again, here's our very first point in that orbiting curve. I'll go ahead and turn this off. I'm going to turn all of this information off as well because I don't want it to kind of show up. I'll even go ahead and hide this point. I can even kind of zoom back out real quick and hide this stuff as well. I don't want to delete it because uh, some of it is using that grasshopper script. If you do decide to like move around, if you just kind of turn this off and turn it back on, it'll bring you right back to that starting point, which is nice. So now you'll see, I'll kind of give myself a little more room so I can see it better, but I'll just start to basically take this slider and start to move it. And now you can see that the camera is orbiting around it. Okay. Pretty cool. Um, you'll see that it does kind of jump like back to the origin at this last one. So what we want to do is just go ahead and give this a, an expression to do x minus 1. 
And so now it should uh, kind of actually stop at that last one. And just because um, uh, this was technically starting at the second point because it was looking at the list item one and not list item zero. So we just wanted to kind of correct that. If you decide that you want uh, your video to actually go a little bit slower, all you have to do is increase uh, the number of points on that curve, right? So I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see that. It's already pretty dense, so it's kind of hard, but if I just really increase, oops, and let's just uh, drag it out this way. So if I wanna either triple it or double it, you'll see that basically it's going to only look at um, a third of those points. And so therefore it's gonna move much slower. So let's go ahead and do that to true. And again, now I animate my slide and you'll see that it starts to orbit much slower and it doesn't get nearly as far. I can see here's all those points. And if I wanna look at where it actually ends, See if I can, if it'll pop up somewhere. Let's turn this off. So it only makes it that far onto the curve, right? So if you were to kind of increase or decrease that a little bit more, you can see that it gets a little bit further down that arc. So if that's kind of the kind of rule of thumb, if you want the video to move slower, you make sure that this slider for the number of points on this um, arcing uh, camera curve is greater than the number of points in the slider for the animation. If you want it to move faster, then you obviously just reduce this to be less than that. There is something you, else you have to do, because you'll see if I do, let's say kind of half of it, by the time it gets to the end of that arc, it's going to uh, basically reset, right? So I'll zoom out again. I'm going to turn this off so my camera isn't affected by it. But watch as, again, the if I start at zero, by the time it gets to the 145th point or so, it'll s jump back to the start, and that's what kind of creates this really weird kind of uh, resetting of the camera. So if you wanted to basically just pause at the end, so once it just cycles through that curve, um, all you have to do is go to this list item component and where it says wrap, basically if there's more, more indices, right, then there are list items. So this one has 146, this one goes up to 300 and something. If you just turn off that turn that to false so it doesn't wrap around it, you'll see as soon as I get to that, over that 140, it'll actually just uh, stop there. It'll technically disappear, but it'll just keep you there. Um, so you kind of have to figure out how long you want it to pause for. So I'll show you what happens. I'll go ahead and again kind of cycle through this just manually, and then once it gets to the end, you'll see that it just kind of pauses there while the rest of the animation. So you can kind of be strategic of that, like maybe that's what you want it to do, um, but just know that that is an option that you can kind of control uh, the camera to stop at the end while animation still occurs. Um, I want to show one more thing to this. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and flip this curve. So I wanted to actually start over here instead. I'm going to go ahead and actually increase this significantly more. I'll turn this off so that my camera doesn't keep resetting. But I do want to, let's turn on show. Oh, I think that was a previous one. So I'm going to select this curve, type DIR. And I'm just going to go ahead and flip my curve. So it actually starts over here. And what I want to do now is actually add an element to kind of start to zoom in on it as well. 
So what I can do is I can just use a polyline curve and go to this end of the curve and at least start to figure out where do I want it to zoom into. Do I have it kind of zoom into that target location or do I have it zoom into where the water is kind of uh, trickling towards? So I'm going to try that. Um, might be a little bit weird with the camera location over there, but we'll give it a shot. And I don't want it to actually go all the way to it. I probably want to kind of figure out like, okay, maybe I want it to zoom in to something there. So maybe just uh, part of that distance to the ground. So I'll just kind of click a point onto here somewhere. And go ahead and just split it. Get rid of that. I know what that point is. I'll get rid of that, get rid of this. And now I'm actually going to take these two curves and join them. Okay, so it looks like let's go ahead and now re reference that. Perfect. So it's still starting over there. And so now you'll see that. Um, Let's see how many points we've got here. Okay. Um, and now you'll see that as I do this, as I get towards the end, um, in this case, we probably want it to be much less, or not much less, but we do want it to be around the same amount. So I'm going to do. 307 exactly that way it actually reaches there at the very end perfect okay so let's go ahead and activate it now so we're going to start off a little bit further i'll go ahead and hide this again double check too to make sure everything's still staying within that safe frame so that nothing gets chopped off it's a little bit close over here um, Looks like we're just barely in there as well, so that's always good to kind of keep in mind so that you don't have any surprises once you start to actually animate the video and realize that it gets chopped off. So again, all I am doing is using this to animate it, so we'll see how it works. So now I start to kind of zoom in, which is kind of interesting, right? So just so happens I was lucky enough that uh, it didn't start to clip it at the end, but now we've got even added that extra level of dynamic quality where we orbit and start to zoom in on it. If, I, if I'm really kind of uncomfortable with it being that close to the bottom, I could um, obviously adjust the things manually. I can even increase my lens length, so maybe that's closer to like 30. So that gives me a little bit more uh, room to work with but yeah now we've got this animation video that's showing both the water moving as well as a camera to follow it which is pretty cool